morning. It is zero farm 30 as usual. <laughs> Up every day at 5 a.m. out here to start working before the heat comes. In today's video, I'm going to focus on summertime treatments. What we can do to our lawn that's not going to hurt it. There's no way to hurt it if we do this. That's number one. Number two, I'll also talk about fertilizers. Should you be fertilizing this time of year? And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a bunch of updates. I'm going to give you an update on this back seating. I'm going to give you an update on the front seating that we completely redid that whole 12,000 square foot area. Two days ago, I had an irrigation system put in. I'm going to show you that. That's running off a shallow well. I'm going to take you up to the garden. Now, Ryan is running down to the beach house. Um, he's taking a trip down there for a few days. We've got a couple things to do. I'm going to have him check on my lawn down there. But I'm also going to send down a cooler full of vegetables. So I got to run up to the garden. I got to pick some vegetables. We got a bunch of friends and neighbors down there. Um, they know I got a farm up here. So I'm going to send down a big cooler full of vegetables. What a great way to use them. Okay. So I also forgot. I don't know if you can see it. I got now. Nah, you can't see it. I got a big blue tarp over there and it's covering two big bags of leveling mix. We're getting ready to do a leveling video here. The other thing we're doing, we're getting ready today. John and Jeff are going to show up. They're going to dig a, a big trench along those uh, railroad ties out here and we're going to install a hard uh, French drain system and I'll do a video on that. We'll talk about the different methods and different types of piping that's used because there's some new stuff on the market. So we'll talk about that. So hit that red subscribe button and also don't forget the lawn guides cover a lot of what we're talking about here. It has schedules, it has calendars, it has product links and the lawn guides. We built three websites. We built three websites for each lawn, basically. So we have a Bermuda website, a Zoysia website, and a Cool Season website. Go to freelawncareguide.com. There's all your answers that you need. We even brought in additional experts from extension offices to talk about Cool Season, all kinds of stuff. So go use them. A million and a half people have used them already. So join them. Okay, so we are July something. I don't even know what day it is. July 14th, 13th, I don't even know. But it's hot. It's in the 90s and it's humid and we're getting these rainstorms, thankfully. Last year we were in a huge drought period. It was horrible. Last year we had a big drought. This year, it's like we're dealing with the humidity and loss like from our vegetable gardens. This is the time of year where fungus moves in. We had a huge amount of fungus here in the backyard. That's why we just took everything down and we're restarting this backyard into a warm season grass, something that can take this heat. But there's really two different ways that you need to think about this. And it's a cool season versus a warm season. So let's talk about warm season first. Warm season, as long as you're getting rain and as long as you have irrigation, you can just keep fertilizing. Just every three or four weeks, put down a light coat of PGF complete and then focus on your soil health. And that's what I'm gonna tell you for everybody. Focus on your soil health. So products like human char, which is a mix of humic acid and biochar, be putting that down. You can put it down as much as you want. You can't hurt your lawn. Dirt Booster. Dirt Booster has organic matter. It has mycorrhizal fungi. It has good microbes. It has biochar, it has humic acid. It is the best thing that you can do for your soil in the summertime. And you have to put it down when the temperatures really are running about 80 and above. So this is the time. Put down Dirt Booster. Matter of fact, that's what I'm doing today. I'm gonna to put down a treatment of the Dirt Booster here and I'm gonna put some more Dirt Booster out front. Put down some Dirt Booster, guys. You, you can put down it every single day. It doesn't matter. Um, it is fantastic for your soil. It's the only thing we use in our vegetable gardens. We use zero fertilizers, zero fertilizers. And that organic matter breaks down naturally and slowly and slowly feeds the soil. And we have thousands of pounds of produce that are up here. So put down Dirt Booster. Now let's talk about mild fertilizer treatments. Yes, you can use Super Juice, you can use Green Shocker. Those are two products that anyone can use pretty much at any time as long as you're not in a drought period. You can come out and do a light spray of Super Juice. You're gonna put down humic acid. You're gonna put down fulvic acid. You're gonna put down, uh, I think it's a, what is it? A 712 ratio. Uh, you're gonna put down iron. It has high iron in it. So you're gonna get a nice dark green pop. Uh, sea kelp, it has all that good stuff. Green Shocker. Green Shocker is probably one of my favorite products because it's easier. People say all the time, Doc, what about Super Juice versus Green Shocker? You can use either one. Uh, Super Juice probably has a little bit more beneficial as far as the micronutrients and the sea kelp and that kind of stuff. But Green Shocker is just so easy. You can come out before work, literally, and do your entire lawn in 10, 15 minutes while the dew is out there. And that's when I like to do it, when the dew is on the lawn in the morning. The particles will dissolve in about 60, in about one to two minutes. Run your irrigation system, it's in. And it's very, very mild. 
but you just keep watering and watering and watering, you get that nice green pop, just a tiny bit of nutrients. What we don't want to be doing, what we don't want to be doing this time of year is we do not want to be coming out, and I don't care what kind of lawn it is, you don't want to be coming out with a real strong, slow release fertilizer like a 30 something, like a 3005 or a 30 something something. That's what I would not use. That's why if you look at it, every single product that I either I help um, develop with the Andersons or that I use from the Andersons is mild. The strongest one I use is PGF Complete, which is a 1648 or a 1608, and it has super fine particles, which allows you to do light treatments repeatedly. So instead of coming out and putting a 3005 out once every eight weeks and run the risk of a burn or, or too much energy, come out with a light coat of PGF Complete. And I say light coat, what's a light coat? Bag rate's a light coat. Put it out of bag rate. What, what I'm really saying to you guys is I want you during the summertime when you have this heat, Focus on your soil. Focus on Humichar and focus on Dirt Booster. Those are the two products that you can put down all you want. Then just go with mild feedings. And if you're a warm season grass, remember, if you've got irrigation, you've got rain, it's called warm season for a reason. It loves the heat. It's actually going to shut down when the cool season guys are actually going up. Our grasses are going to be shutting down. Cool season guys, you guys are going to be kicking in your fertilizer programs come uh, come the fall, we're actually going to be shutting it down. So anyways, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run around real quick. I'm going to run up to the garden, but I want to show you this. Uh, I want to show you what's going on here real quick. Okay, so let's talk about this backyard for a minute. Unfortunately, this is a warm season grass, which means slow germination. <laughs> so hopefully I have put down here. Remember, we scalped this off and we found zoysia underneath. And what I'm doing now is I'm mixing in Bermuda because zoysia seed is non-existent. You can't get any more zoysia seed, period. It's gone. It's absolutely gone. So we're going to mix in common Bermuda and there's some little orange seeds that you're going to see here. And what I did is I also ordered some uh, Meyer Blackjack 2. And I'm starting to throw in some Blackjack on this lawn too because of the shade issue. So we'll see, we're gonna let all three compete, but this is a slow, painful process. You know, we had a beautiful yard back here, we scalped it all off, we core aerated, but this is long and slow. Now, thank God, I've got free water. So if I wanna come out here, if I wanna keep this wet and water every two or three hours, I can, and that's the beautiful thing about running off this shallow well. So let me go out and let me make a couple points on the front that's pretty interesting. So this is a horrible time of the day to shoot video, but it's a great time of the day to explain what's happening out here. Um, you can obviously see the trenches here that were dug. We have these trenches that were dug in for the irrigation, and that comes up and goes into my shallow well, which I need to clean up. And then what we do is we ran this irrigation pipe down here, or excuse me, drain pipe, and that all goes down here like a nice little river. We're gonna smooth this out. I want you to notice something. In here, you have a little fine green haze that's about an inch, inch and a half. As we go down, what happens? This over here is a cool season ryegrass and it's got shade. It only gets sun a couple hours a day, three or four hours a day. Then it goes into shade and you can see how it's performing. Now I do have Bermuda. I have a lot of Bermuda in here too. But once I go, once I leave this shaded area and I go over here, it starts to look kind of sparse, but when it's sparse, that's because there's a lot of Bermuda coming up. So this right here, see all that? That's all Bermuda coming up. I'm really happy. Now you might even be able to see some of this orange seed. Let me put it right here. I just, I've been throwing out, there's orange specks there, and that's that uh, blackjack. <laughs> we come over here and look at this rye. Isn't that crazy? What a difference. What a difference. That is just crazy. So now you can understand why I often mix seeds and just let it compete, let it battle out. This area, Bermuda will probably grow in here, but it's gonna be weak. And I'm telling you, I'm gonna have to get some kind of shade tolerant kind of grass in here. I don't know what I'm gonna put. It may even put a fescue in here. But this over here, this is gonna end up being, that's gonna be a real strong Bermuda patch over there just because of the heat, just because of the sun. Um, it just, it, that's the way it's gonna work out. Okay, so we're up here at the Dirt Booster Victory Garden. The battle this year for almost all growers has been, 
in our area has been fungus. 90 degrees, hot, humid, consistent rain, no dry out periods. That means you're gonna get fungus onto your plants, whether it's blight or something else. So fortunately, we've been able to sort of keep it under control right now. But you know, if you look at the tomato plants, you can always see a little bit coming on. It's just a battle. We don't use any fertilizers. This is basically all natural, quote unquote, all organic. The only thing we do is we till dirt booster into the soil and then we make dirt booster compost. That's it. So we take composted horse manure, cow manure. You can buy it at Lowe's, Home Depot. We buy it by a truckload. Mix dirt booster into it, wet it, stir it up, and it heats up. So yesterday I came back out. Now this was an old pile. And Ryan and I came out yesterday and we added more dirt booster and water to it. And look at what I see already. Isn't this cool? This is the coolest thing right here. So look at that. That is good mycorrhizal fungi growing right there. That's what we want to see. So if I open this pile up, so see all that steam? That's a really active pile. And I love the little bugs. I love everything that's going on in there. It's just a whole life cycle. But that's really active. That's hot. Let me get my, let me, I don't have my temperature gauge. I guarantee you that's 125, 130, maybe even 135. That's hot. And it just smells so wonderful. So I'm getting ready to, I think I'm going to pull up all my beans over there because something happened to them and they're just not regenerating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up all those beans. Beans. I'm going to throw some dirt booster in there and replant that. But today I got to come up here. I got to harvest. I probably have... <laughs> I probably have a hundred red tomatoes. Let me walk over here, I just saw this. Look at this, this is crazy. Right. I mean, that's just one plant. There's gotta be 15 tomatoes on that one plant. Come along here. And then like, look at this grouping over here. Is that crazy or what? And don't even ask me what variety they are because we just went ahead and we just bought a whole bunch of different varieties and just, you know, heck, let's just buy them and plant them. <laughs> so I'm going to pick a fair amount of these. I'm going to send it down with Ryan. And then I think I'll call uh, Christy. She was in my last video. Maybe she and a couple of friends will come up here and get the rest of these red tomatoes. Now, if you didn't watch my other video of the day, we completely cut off all of our zucchini plants except for tiny little new leaves and squash plants so this was huge this was four feet tall and this you couldn't walk through here we took every single leaf off of this plant except for anything that was new and green so let me give you a perfect example see all these see all these major stems here those are all huge leaves all huge leaves and what we've done is we've left just the little small leaves so these clean little leaves now if I have something that looks a little diseased I'll probably end up cutting that off too but what ends up happening is this look see now I'm starting over again starting over again oh there's a cool little zucchini look at it see now now I can come out here and actually harvest some stuff that's edible versus this big stuff so <laughs> dude this is just a, a lone plant out here dude, look at that look at that beast isn't that gorgeous absolutely gorgeous oh come on baby I don't want to hurt you There's some hidden, oh, here's a nice one. And this Carolina horse nettle, if you don't know what Carolina horse nettle is, that's the most vile weed that you can find. And this stuff is in here and it hurts. God, I hate that stuff. I'm glad I came up here when I did. I'm already getting soaked. It's hot. 
So in about 15 minutes, had a couple of big zucchinis I went ahead and grabbed. By the way, when you see that white on it, you know what that's from? That is because we cut off all the leaves and they got sunburn. That's just sunburn. So I've got two big buckets full of tomatoes. This is all full of cucumbers. There's one or two zucchinis and then green peppers. Aren't they pretty? The other day I had one that weighed two pounds, one ounce. <laughs> These things are amazing. Amazing. I use a uh, all natural organic OMRI certified bug killer, which is basically oils. It's peppermint oil, rosemary oil, garlic oil. It's just a mix of natural oils. And that's what we spray on the produce to keep the bugs off of it. And it's pretty effective. I'd say we've reduced almost 80, 90% of the bug problems we had up there. But I don't like to send it off without washing it off. And so I put a couple drops of Dawn in a bucket and then I give them a bath and then I clean them. So. I still have a whole another bucket of tomatoes to fit in here, but isn't that gorgeous? Yellow squash on the bottom, cucumbers on the bottom, working up green peppers and tomatoes. <laughs> So I got to ride up to the cornfield to check on something and I figured I'd just take the camera along. Follow me if you want to. in the cornfield up there. Gosh, we really have turned this place into a preserve. Um, <clears throat> I would say 70 to 80% of this land is simply dedicated to the wildlife and the deer out here. But I wanna show you something that's kind of funny. Um, I love my deer and I take care of them. I spend thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours of time. So I just came and cut this field and I planted buckwheat. I'm trying to get some buckwheat. It's hard to do in the summertime. That field is looking fantastic and they're in here every night. But they come up here and they take bites out of my pumpkins. They don't really like pumpkins, so I have to put wire around them. See that wire? And what I have to do is every day I have to come up here and I gotta look for baby pumpkins. So you can see that one. That one was bitten before I got to it. Another pumpkin here. Oh, I got a baby. So if I don't get up here, if I don't get up here and protect that one with wire, they'll get it. Oh, there's another one coming right there too. So I got two, you can see as an example, that's a young one and they'll grow, they'll push that mesh up. So it's not a in problem. between, I don't, we don't use any glyphosate or killers up here. So there's a lot of tall grass in between the corn rows in here. And you can see where the deer bed down at night. They're gonna end up eating, I would say probably half the corn in here, but I mean, there's so much corn. I mean, how much corn? I'm having enough trouble giving away produce as it is. That's a pretty good sized corn field right there. I don't know, what is that? Two acres of corn, something like that. And some of this corn in here, some of this corn in here is actually getting it's almost getting ready. I found some bigger ones. See, if I come in here, I'm always afraid I'm going to scare up a baby in one of these rows in here. Oh, so let's check it out here. It's getting close, man. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Look at that right there. Is that awesome or what? Is that awesome or what? That is really close. I mean, that's edible right there. That is awesome. So I would say next week for sure, it's time to get up here and you gotta hunt because this is such a weird planting up here. This field was low on phosphorus and it was low on nitrogen. 
This is the only field we did not work with dirt booster. We, could, we were able to get a little bit in, and you can see in these taller plants, we were able to get some dirt booster in early on them. But the rest of it, we actually had to buy some, bought some natural phosphorus, ground natural phosphorus. This, this field was just a nasty old clumping fescue field. And at the last minute, David was up here and he, I said, man, I'd, I'd really like to plant some corn up there or something. And he was like, I'll, I'll, I'll get my tractor. <laughs> I'll get my tractor mow plant. Now I want to tell you, you guys have, have seen David maybe or heard of him. David had a 90% blockage and had a heart attack. And the guy in the room next to him had like an 80% blockage and died. And because they got him to the hospital quick enough and got him fixed, he's gonna be up and about in just a couple of weeks, back to normal. Thank God, man. There is a plan. If you don't think there is, you better live like this is your last planting season because it just may well be. Oh, I really want to go boil this up and eat it. <laughs> Butter and salt. Oh, dog's, dog's gonna carb up. Doc's gonna carb up. I'm low carbing and low salting, so I may have to have a Friday night feast here. Wow.